Chapter 3. McClatchy squeezed my shoulders in his bony hands. Then he let go of me. He was breathing hard, making whistling noises through his nose. His eyes bulged wide. Sorry, I stammered. You're on my bad list now, McClatchy rasped. And believe me, kid, you don't want to be on my bad list. Sorry, I repeated. His eyes were on the open mailbox, jammed with trash. His shoulders shuddered. He kept making that whistling sound. Was he going to totally lose it? I heard the scrape of footsteps. I turned toward them. Oh, no. Now I was really in trouble. My dad came walking toward us. He had Mr. Phineas on his leash. What's happening here? Dad called. Dad is tall and athletic looking. He has wavy brown hair and dark eyes and a great gleaming smile. Mom calls him her movie star husband. I guess because he's kind of handsome. He was in his workout clothes, a gray sleeveless t-shirt over gray sweatpants. I lowered my head as he stepped up to us. Mr. Phineas sniffed furiously at the garbage that had fallen out of the can. Your son had better shape up, McClatchy said through clenched teeth. I felt Dad's eyes on me. I kept my head down. What has Jay done? Dad asked. Did he spill this garbage? McClatchy motioned toward the house with his head. He moved that ladder to the open window. I think he planned to sneak into my house. Dad gasped. No way, I screamed. I just wanted you to think. I'm sure Jay wouldn't break into your house, Dad told McClatchy. He didn't know I was home, McClatchy said. I saw everything. Dad put his hand on my chin and forced me to look at him. Jay, did you plan to go into Mr. McClatchy's house, he demanded. I shook my head. No way, of course not. He and McClatchy stared at me for a long while as if I were some kind of lab specimen. Dad spoke up first. Jay hasn't been himself lately he told McClatchy. McClatchy just nodded. He kept rubbing his lips over his teeth, making a wet, smacky sound. Dad picked up the soup can and dirty newspaper from the two lawn gnomes. He stuffed the garbage in the trash can. Very sorry, he said softly. It won't happen again, will it, Jay? No, I muttered. Mr. Phineas was licking up something green and disgusting from the spilled trash. I tugged him away and pulled the green gunk from between his teeth. Then I followed Dad across the street. He led me into the living room. Have a seat, he pointed to the couch. Mr. Phineas had already plopped down on the rug in front of the fireplace. I perched on the edge of the couch. Are we going to have a serious talk now, I said. Dad stood above me. He frowned. Son, tell me, why are you acting so strange? You know you're not supposed to play tricks on the neighbors. I smoothed my hand over the green leather arm of the couch. Sorry, Dad, I murmured. I I was just bored. Fine things to do, Dad snapped. I don't want you to get in any more trouble. Do you understand me? You can spend the next five nights after dinner in your room, Dad said. The next time your punishment will be a lot worse. But, Dad, he shook his head angrily. Then he spun around and stopped angrily out of the living room. Well, Jay, you messed up again. I slumped back on the couch. I didn't want to make people angry at me. I just wanted to have some fun. I called to Mr. Phineas to come over to me. I felt like petting him, but he wouldn't budge from his rug behind the mantel. It's his favorite place. Kayla walked into the room. Don't tell me you're in trouble again, Jay. None of your business, I snapped. She tossed back her curly red hair and sighed. Nothing ever changes. We had to move because of you, and now you still act like a jerk in our new home. I already apologized, I muttered. Maybe you could cut me some slack? She shrugged. Let's go ride our bikes. Huh? I climbed up off the couch. You heard me. Let's go ride our bikes. There's a lot of stuff in this neighborhood we haven't seen yet. Yeah, okay, I agreed. At least we can't get in trouble riding our bikes, right? Right.